Polarization is the phenomenon that allows polarized sunglasses to block glare that's coming off of things such as water and also actually allows you to see what's maybe on your TI captive, which we'll actually get to that in a second video. But we'll start with how polarization works. Transverse waves can be polarized. Longitudinal waves cannot, because what uh, polarization is talking about is the plane at which uh, transverse waves are vibrating. And if I'm shaking a wave on a slinky, that's going to send vertically polarized the waves along the slinky. Light also uh, can be polarized based on its electrical field and its uh, perpendicular magnetic field. Those are always going to be perpendicular to each other, but you can polarize. When you polarize one, you polarize the other. So normally light coming from the sun is going to have its, let's say, electrical field. Some of it's going this way, some photons will be going this way, some photons will be going this way. It's all a mixture, so we say that it's unpolarized. But then, if you have a polarizing filter, which might look like these sunglasses microscopically somehow, uh, you can then say that these maybe are only going to let through the electrical field that's going horizontal. So if this were a polarizing filter, which it's not, but if it were, the light coming through would be horizontally polarized. Here in this situation, the light getting through is vertically polarized. And over here, if you try and put uh, horizontally polarized light through these vertical what's now vertical polarization, nothing gets through. Now what this is saying down here is that if you have unpolarized light and you're polarizing filter, it's always going to let through half the intensity. Or whatever light does get through has half the intensity. Now a guy named Malus, M-A-L-U-S, is given credit with discovering that when light hits something like water that's partially transparent, uh, it, or it's going to have, when it bounces off, somewhat, uh, it's going to be somewhat polarized. And what happens is it's going to be polarized mainly horizontally because the surface of the lake is horizontal. It's like you've got light that's come in like this and like this and like this, and for some reason the horizontally polarized light bounces off quite well. The vertically polarized light does not bounce off quite as much. And so reflected light from things like a lake surface will be horizontally polarized. If you had a vertical lake, I guess it would be vertically polarized, but I don't know how that would be possible. A uh, few facts is that if the water, it depends on the angle that it comes in. If it comes in straight on the normal, it is not polarized. The amount that it's polarized will vary depending on what angle it comes in at, and I'll show you how. This guy named Brewster came up with an equation uh, that would tell you what the best angle for polarizing light off uh, the surface of a transparent substance would be. It's a pretty fringe, fringe area, but that's what he did. Uh, and that is going to be this equation here, where we assume it's coming through air, and then n is going to be the index of refraction of the material that's hitting, such as water. And this angle uh, is going to be the uh, angle of total polarization. In other words, all the light will be polarized once it bounces off at this magical angle. Now, you don't have to derive it or anything, which is nice, and it's almost always used for stuff going through air and reflecting off the water. So now, pause it and see if you can solve this sample problem below here. Now we assume that, well, we know that n is 1.33 that of water, and we're looking for the angle in degrees, so we can do inverse tangent of the index of refraction to give us our angle, and you should get an angle of about 53 degrees as measured from the normal. So that's going to be something like 53 degrees as the light's coming in to hit the water. Oh, I get my polarizers on. So, uh, two terms, polarizer and analyzer. There's really no difference between the two. It's just a matter of which polarizing filter you call your polarizer and which one you call your analyzer. The first one that's receiving the unpolarized light, usually people will call the polarizer. And that's going to take stuff that's going this way and this way and polarized in every way, 
and make it polarized. And that's always going to reduce your intensity by half and make it 50% as intense. So let's say if this is a filter, the light's coming through, and what comes through is going to be vertically polarized and 50% as intense. The second filter, like let's say I'm going to have one like this, that is going to be called my analyzer because I can turn that and analyze whatever type of light is let through uh, because there's a mathematical law that will determine how much gets through because if you have vertical polarized light and then you have a horizontal polarized analyzer yunk, nothing gets through but what's kind of funny is if you turn this just a little bit some does get through even though in our minds vertical polarized light looks like it shouldn't get through a filter like at 45 degrees some of it does uh, and here's how you calculate that if you have already polarized light that's coming into a polarizing filter at a certain angle, then Malice's law here can help you predict what the new intensity of the light will be relative to the initial intensity, which is what I sub zero is. This is in degrees. Now with this in mind, we have this sample problem with unpolarized light coming in. Here's point A, here's point B. Pause it and see if you can solve this problem. Now the first part, saying what's the intensity at A, that should be easy. That is going to be 50% because it's always going to be cut in half no matter what the orientation of the polarizer is if you have unpolarized light, which we do. Now, see if you can solve the next two parts. It's important to know that this angle here at theta is between the incoming polarized light, which is a vertical, and the analyzer, and what its axis is. In the picture down here, it would be 90 degrees, and you'd have none getting through. Uh, but in this case, we're saying that this is twisted, so that's 20 degrees above the horizontal. However, since the angle is between the vertical light and that, that's going to be this angle here. So 20 degrees is here, so this angle is 70 degrees, or 90 minus 20. So that will allow us to do the math. Even before you start the math, you should realize not very much light is going to get through because you've got vertically polarized light, and then the analyzer is almost horizontal. It's only maybe 20 degrees up. So to do that math, we plug in our numbers like this. Cosine of 70 is going to be 0 0.34, and square that. And that is going to give me a 0 0.1. Two. Or in other words, you can say 12% of the incoming light. Or you could also write it as 0.12 times I sub 0, or 0.12 times the intensity of what got through at A. For this last part, you have to remember that the light coming in was unpolarized, and then it was reduced to 50%, and then that light was then reduced... Oh, to a further 12%. So you can just say that you're going to have point, point 0.5 times point 0.12, and that's going to give you point 0 0.06, or 6% 6 of what you had before. Or you could say point 0 0.06 of the initial unpolarized stuff.